Hey there, everyone. This is Doug with BH. On any shoot, you need a few things to get the job done a subject, a camera, and an operator. And the more cameras you have, the more operators you need. Well, that is, of course, unless you have PTZ cameras. PTZ cameras are motorized cameras that support panning, tilting, and zooming. It's in the name all from a remote control. And in many cases, you can connect multiple PTZ cameras to one controller and have just one operator. The setups can be as simple as one camera and controller or several cameras working together in concert with a switcher to produce a true multi-camera production. So let's dive into the world of PTZ cameras. What are PTZ cameras? PTZ cameras really means any camera that supports pan, tilt, and zoom functionality all from its own motorized enclosure. Now, thanks to their all-in-one nature, they're ideal for live events, houses of worship, live streaming, discussion panels, concerts, and conference rooms. Really, any place where you need camera control and are maybe short an operator or two. PTZs also excel in any area where you would perhaps use a traditional smaller sensor video camera, though this is actually changing as PTZ cameras like Canon's CRN500, for example, use a one inch sensor and can provide a bit more depth in their image. Now, typically PTZ cameras offer a wealth of connections and for good reason. Video feeds come in the form of an HDMI, SDI, or more recently, the NDI protocol. But there's also the need to connect the camera to a controller or network. Usually this is done either through an RJ45 connection, which doubles as a network ethernet port, though it sometimes comes in the form of a serial connection such as RS422. There's other connections depending on the PTZ camera you choose, but we're gonna take a look at that in a bit. For now, we're gonna rewind a little and head over to BNH's NAB 2022 booth, where we got to see a three camera PTZ setup in action, all controlled, powered, and connected with one cable. All right, everyone, so behind me, you can see, is part of the BNH NAB booth for 2022. They've actually got quite an installation here, but behind me is the PTZ setup, and it's all set up over NDI exclusively for video, power, and control. And it's just one of the ways that BNH is able to set up such installations. So come with me, we're gonna take a look at what they've got going on. We've got a whole truss here, three cameras that feed into the switchboard over there. Now, starting from the left over here, we have one Canon CRN500, and you can see there's just one cable coming out the back. This is an ethernet cable. It is set for NDI video, and it goes right up the truss, across, and feeds all the way down. Now, moving over a little bit, we have this middle unit here. This is rigged upside down. So, of course, we have this configured to shoot upside down. Out NDI to the switch. And the last camera, the third one that we have here, same model, again, on an arm, totally flexible. But again, this is just going right down over into the setup over here. And everything is controlled via this TriCaster switcher. You can see we have all the multiple angles right over here. They've been testing switching through the day. It's actually pretty much all set up, so we're just tidying things up. But everything is controlled exclusively through here, one cable. So for the setup today, we're relying primarily on the Canon CRN500 PTZ camera. This is a one inch CMOS sensor camera, so great 4K image, very clean, very sharp, good color. And it's even got Canon's dual pixel autofocus, so shouldn't have to worry about keeping things in focus. Now, it's got a 15 times zoom lens on there, which is great because we're doing presentations across all of NAB. So that means, of course, we're gonna want nice close-ups, wide shots of the entire panel. This should get the job done. Now, we did mention the NDI coming straight out. That's NDI HX built-in support, but there's also HDMI and 3G SDI support as well if you wanna go the more traditional way. Now, talking audio, if you've got a simpler setup, audio is of course handled separately here, but for this, there's dual XLR inputs, so you can get, for example, board sound or a separate microphone going straight into the PTZ camera. And if you're doing a small event, that takes care of pretty much everything. So. What do you need to add PTZ cameras to your production? Well, aside from the camera itself, I'm gonna stick with my favorite piece of advice, no matter what I'm talking about. Consider the needs of your production. If you're doing a very simple single camera shoot in a small conference room and don't need sophisticated control, a PTZ camera with its included remote control can probably get the job done. But like I said, that's a very simple setup. For something closer to what we did at NAB, you'll want to consider the following. Do I need multiple cameras? And if so, 
how am I controlling them? Now, we used a TriCaster setup, which allowed control of the three cameras, but also provided the video switch and control necessary for a multi-camera production. You could, however, break these functions out into a separate switcher and controller. Canon, for example, has their own RC IP100 controller, which can control up to 100 of their PTZ cameras with a touch interface and joystick. You could then pair this with a simple switcher like the Roland VR1HD, for example. What signal types should I use? While we used an advanced NDI setup to carry video, control, and power to the cameras, this is by no means the only option at your disposal. NDI, or Network Device Interface, is a way to provide IP video, that is, video addressable from a network, in a low latency form to compatible NDI switchers. It basically means a single Ethernet cable can carry your video signal as well as the controller and power signal, provided you have the right hardware. But seeing as NDI is a whole nother conversation, I'll leave it at that. Your other options are more typical, SDI or HDMI. For more professional installations, SDI is probably the way to go, as it provides a locked, stable connection, and it's usually the interface you'll see on higher-end switchers or video streaming devices. That said, for something like the CRN500, 4K video is only possible when using HDMI or when streaming directly over an IP connection. So if you wanna produce a 4K video for your PTZ setup, you have those two options, or you could possibly even convert the HDMI signal to something like 12G SDI. But that's actually a good place to bring up streaming. If you've never streamed video before, one of the most common ways to do so is over what's called RTMP or RTSP. They're both protocols. I won't get too specific here, but in the CRN500's case, you're able to directly stream video to an RTMP destination, which for single camera setups means you can directly operate and stream all from one camera. This capability is actually being extended to SRT streaming as well in the near future, which opens up even more ways to stream high quality video straight out of the camera. Now, when it comes to audio, most multi-camera productions would probably opt for a separate audio mixer to handle the job, to then be combined at the switcher. But for single camera setups, it is possible to use the XLR ports or even 3.5 millimeter mic in jack on the CRN500, with the audio then being embedded in the HDMI, SDI, or IP feed. So, while this is a pretty brief overview of what you can do with a PTZ camera, it should get you started. And if you're big into live streaming or concert recordings, for example, they're honestly a great option to get the coverage you need. Also, don't worry. I don't wanna put any camera operators out of business. You can absolutely have multiple cameras that are operated by people and then integrate a PTZ camera for some additional coverage. Think a wide sweeping shot of a show or a fixed close-up of a podium speaker. As always, the possibilities are endless. So that's it for now. Let us know how you've used or intend to use PTZ cameras in your next production in the comments below. I'm Doug with BNH, and I'll see you next time.